is drama in the desert. And drama of the highest order. What else would you expect in a global Champions League finale from Riyadh? Falling apart for the Stockholm Hearts in round one, but all coming together for the Berlin Eagles in that first round. One hand is on the trophy, overlooked by Ludger Birbaum. Can the Berlin Eagles be crowned champions today in Riyadh? Let's find out on the 15th and final stage of the global Champions League. It is quite difficult to believe that throughout the entire year, the trophy will now come down to a single day, a single point, and once again, the Stockholm Hearts, powered by H&M, and the Berlin Eagles, powered by Fundis Reisport, will go head-to-head -to -head today in a single final day shootout that puts the Germans as the firm favourites to go on and lift their first ever Global Champions League title, and it will all unfold for you here on GCTV. Let's not forget that there is still a battle for fourth place for the Shanghai Swans not comfortable in fourth. Madrid in motion in pole position. The last team to go. One of many teams on double clear on knocking on the door, trying to put the pressure on the Swans to see whether or not they will drop the ball and step out of the Global Champions League Super Cup semi-final spots. But of course, the big spotlight will fall onto the Berlin Eagles, will fall onto the Stockholm Hearts. And based on round one performances, the Stockholm Hearts will be the third team out the gate compared to the Berlin Eagles, who will be the 12th team to go. It is all in their favor. Let's relive how the battle played out in Global Champions League round one between these two giants. It's a one-on-one -on -one battle between the Eagles and the Hearts. Whichever team outperforms their rival, they win the championship. And it starts with a surprise with Nikola Filipats, a legend of love, no 18 and Indiana with Marlin Bayard Johnson. Filipats, 60% clears. Flat un, and there goes the rail. There goes the rail that might cost them the championship. And I'm sure that Ludger Bebam of Berlin Eagles will uh, pass on that information to his riders because now the championship changes. It's no longer about the pace in this uh, first round. It is just about jumping clears. The pressure now is really, really on the shoulders of Peter Fredriksen. Luckily, he's got one of the best horses of the planet, H&M All In. centimeters to spare nothing flashy about him but super intelligent and super efficient and here's another clear oh and there it goes all in jumps to the right just like it happened to Vreeling and it is a second rail for the team this is drama in the desert here come the direct rivals here come the Berlin Eagles powered by Fundis Rajport this has to be possible Kukuk and Mumbai they go first And now this Rome Grand Prix winner can push as Mumbai is now jumping very sharp through that line by the grandstands. Cuts the corner a little bit. No issues over the upright. Here comes Kukuk with Mumbai. A slow clear, but a clear, and it is a clear. In 78, 79.02 seconds must be one of the slowest clears indeed it is. But Christian Kukuk gives the Berlin Eagles a first clear and Weishaupt never had more than a single rail down all season. There's just three fences to jump for a huge lead going into round two. Weishaupt with lots of confidence now down to the last. This cannot go wrong, not in this round and maybe not even in the next it is indeed a double clear and look at that elation already and the disappointment for those in red but those in grey will be celebrating tonight they can't celebrate too early but this is looking very 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 good uh, well we're obviously disappointed i mean uh, we came here to jump double clear we came here with the best horses possible and both rounds with four faults is just uh, not what we hoped and not what we wanted 
So, big disappointment on the face of Olivia Philippartz, understandably, as things did not go right for the Stockholm Hearts in round one. However, as we know, a very different story for the Berlin Eagles. Here we see Marlon Bide Johnson and Olivia Philippartz getting their course walk underway. The big news from the day, though, is the fact that Olivia Philippartz retains his place in the starting lineup and will jump alongside Marlon Bayer Johnson. That means no Peter Fredriksson in round two for the Stockholm Hearts. So if things went wrong for the Stockholm Hearts, they certainly went right for the Berlin Eagles in round one. We caught up with Christian Kukuk to look back on the round and most importantly, perhaps the change in strategy for the team. We were a little bit lucky with the draw that we could start behind uh, Stockholm so we could see a little bit um, what they were doing um, because our definitely our plan yesterday was to be better than Stockholm that we could be behind them on Saturday because it's it's always better for you if you can if you can see what the other ones are doing you do the course walk and then you you maybe have a plan A but there's also a plan B uh, and yesterday our plan A was uh, we could see Stockholm and if they would jump both double clear we knew we have to be faster for sure try to be clear also but then we would have need to have a little bit more competitive round so in the end they had both one down and then we said okay we don't have to be the fastest ones today we only have to be clear so we jumped two safe clear rounds I would say we I think we were the slowest ones but we were clear and that was the only thing which was important for us yesterday. So making it very clear that the only thing that mattered to the Berlin Eagles was the clear. They did not care for the time. In fact, they rode as slowly and as conservatively as they could because they knew that a double clear and eight penalty advantage is what was going to matter most for them going into GCL round two today. Well, for the first time this afternoon, let's head then to Riyadh. Frederick de Bakker standing by for us. Frederick, ready for the big day. Let me first start by asking you, did you get much sleep? How are you feeling ahead of today? No, I didn't get any. Uh, last night I was texting everybody, I can't sleep, I'm so hyped about this final, whether it's GCL or later LGCT. There is so much at stake, there's prize money, but it's not prize money, it's, it's, it's just a culmination of this season. So much has happened this season and now it's coming together and it was difficult to catch sleep. But I think I slept more than some of the riders of the Stockholm Hearts team. I have no doubts. Right, let's, let's talk about how this can happen. Is there any evidence, any example possible that the Stockholm Hearts can cling to in the past that will give them the belief that the most unlikeliest of turnarounds is possible at some stage today. What can they look back on to give them that belief? You've, uh, you have to look at the current situation from multiple angles. A. They are, um, I think, eight places behind on the Berlin Eagles. That is way too much. Is it possible to climb up eight places? Just one team has done that this season. That was London Knights in Monaco, moved up 12 places to be precise. So just one team has done that. Can Stockholm Hearts do it? it? You could say it's unlikely. On the other hand, you also have to look at Berlin Eagles. Can teams drop eight places? That's also a possibility. That is actually a possibility because Berlin Eagles dropped 12 in uh, Hamburg and dropped eight, I believe, in uh, uh, Monaco as well. So Berlin Eagles have dropped the ball already twice in the second round. Now, in fairness, to bring all the statistics in, if you look at their entire run throughout the season, they, um, in general, they have nearly always improved their position from round one to round two. So Berlin Eagles, though they have got those two blips, are very unlikely to... Um, to underperform this uh, in the second round. However, the third thing that you have to keep in mind, that though the gap in terms of places looks big, and it's a two-rail difference, it is still just a two-rail difference. It is a rail per rider, and that is crucial. That is crucial. Frederick, in 2021, based on expectations, the Berlin Eagles were expected to finish in 10th place. And if we recall last year, just missing out on the GCL Super Cup semi-finals, they finished in fifth behind the London Knights. Earlier this year, we were part of a GC podcast, you and I. Once again, we, we spoke expectation. Talk to me about what we spoke about in that podcast. And now that we're at the end of the season, have the Berlin Eagles once again delivered, over-delivered, under-delivered? What is the case? 
where with Sal Watson of Acura Ratings, we discussed the entire field and Acura and um, sorry, Berlin Eagles, powered by Fudis Rajport, were actually supposed to finish just above midfield, seventh, eighth, maybe sixth, but, but not inside the top four. They were never expected to be in the top four. Then you have to keep in mind that they didn't field Jean Richard Phillips. Maybe that was also part of those calculations. And they lost Philipp Schulze Tophoff on two occasions, twice with an injury whenever he was just coming back. First, a shoulder injury, then he had the ankle injury. So the team was mainly grouped under uh, around just four riders. And that was never, of course, um, put into those calculations. So yes, based on the predictions, this team is massively overperforming. Right, Frederick, I also want to find out about Peder Frederiksen. I expected him and Marlon Bayard Jonsson to come out today. I think many would have expected them to be the dream team to close out the season. The big news is the fact that Peder has not been selected today. It will once again be Olivia Philippatz and Marlon Bayard Jonsson today. Is there a reason given? Is there an understanding as to why Peder will not be jumping Global Champions League today? Was the fault that H&M All-In sustained at the last fence of Ronda, was it too hard? And did that maybe play with his confidence or with his fitness? That's difficult to say. Is it just Peter who wants to offer the possibility to Mali Bayer Johnson with H&M Indiana to, to save the day, to correct the situation? It's, it's difficult. And uh, what is more difficult is to get in touch with those riders. You feel a lot of tension. In fairness, the Berlin Eagles riders have been a little bit more approachable than um, the Stockholm Hearts riders. Nothing to say about, uh, about Olivier Philippard's you could go up to him and ask him for a reaction. But others have been stepping back a little bit from media and have been in their own bubble trying to save this uh, situation, especially, of course, after what happened in uh, round one. Those two suites, a little bit distant from the rest of the group here. All right, Frederick, we're going to ask you just to give us a moment of your time. We want to once again hear from Christian Kukuk. He sat down with GCTV to not only talk about the performance in day one, but perhaps most importantly, what is the expectation for today's final round of GCL 2022? I'm already excited for tomorrow. I'm, I, I like these situations, actually, also, I have like. to say. I don't know, there's just this special pressure you feel yourself and... Um, uh, this, this makes this sport about and um, I, I like these moments, um, I, I get very focused, I can really concentrate myself, I get quiet and um, yeah, then when it pays out like yesterday, uh, I mean, the, uh, it's even nicer than after and uh, you are more happy than, than normal. Um, if we zoom in, how does it feel for you to because win? Because we, we, were, we were putting a lot of effort uh, and a lot of work in this uh, global season uh, from the beginning on. And I think that's also a reason why we are now here and uh, talking about winning or being second in the overall. And um, yeah, you know, what, what we said before, we had many plans. We were, or we were at least trying to get stick to those plans very correct. And if that would work out, then tomorrow in winning the overall, like what I said, that would just give us a smile on our face and would say, hey, your work paid off. Quite easy to see a smile on the face of Christian Kukuk as he gets ready now for GCL round two. A man who perhaps wasn't smiling throughout those two performances was indeed that of Ludger Biedebaum. Such beautiful images of him in the kiss and cry. And we talk about the moment, the energy. Look at the anxiety and the stress of Ludger Biedebaum living and breathing every single moment. And whether or not he was basically jumping with the boys on that day, he may as well have been with Mila jumping that course as well. So engaged, so energetic was Ludger Biedebaum. We sat down and caught up with him here on GCTV, not just to talk about the end of Global Champions League round two in Riyadh, but also about his illustrious career and when it might just come to an end. Uh, if we do well, no one can steal it away from us. Of course it can go wrong. I mean, it's like in a football game, if you, if you uh, half-time lead 2-0, it's nice, but it's not over yet. It's, uh, we know a lot of things can happen. One has a bit of a misunderstanding, has two rails. And then uh, Stockholm, in this case, have two clear rounds and probably are faster than uh, they are winning the overall. So, but it's a good feeling and they've, they've done really well yesterday. And uh, again, it's in our hands. Same plan as yesterday for the second round? Yeah, this was our strategy the whole season. 
uh, we were not changing so much horses and riders from one day to the next. I think almost every time when we started with the team, we we finished with the team. Um, and here the, again, we, we brought the two. They have the, their two best horses in pretty good shape, that's what. So uh, Christian and Philip will ride again, Mumbai and Kobe, and no changes. We are actually really proud, the whole, you know, it's not only me, it's not only the riders, it's the horse owners, everyone who supports this, our partners at home. Uh, yesterday, for example, we had uh, like the whole company uh, plus friends were watching the streaming and they had eating waffles and they had a drink after it was, I think, something around 100, 120 people, like a little bit public viewing. Uh, so there's a lot of people at home really cheering us on and that it's a really cool feeling. Is it like different for you to be on the sideline and not riding? Mm, no. I really have the same adrenaline when the boys are going in the ring. Probably actually even a bit more than because when you ride yourself, you focus you and your horse and you're not so much distracted by what can go wrong and what you know. So, but the, the, the empathy and the ambition and it is uh, definitely as much as if I ride. And on top of that, it makes me feel good to see the boys. I'm involved, I'm a bit responsible. So uh, <clears throat> it's not really uh, uh, less emotional uh, if I watch in, uh, instead of ride. Is it also more special because you mentioned uh, um, the time is there to, to not ride anymore. Mm -hmm. Is it more special this weekend and also the road to Prague for you? Mm, no, in regards to this, what I mentioned, that there is a, a time where it's over, not really, I don't, it's not something which goes on in my mind all the time. This was a very straightforward answer to Frederick at the time when he asked me the question. Uh, but like today, tomorrow, how, no matter what it goes, if we are first or second, this is not something which is, you know, which I, which I think about a lot. It, it will happen pretty soon. When? We see. So how much longer will the great man continue to go? Would this then see, be seen as the perfect moment to hang up the boots and go out as a Global Champions League winner? But you just get the feeling that that desire, that hunger is still very much there for Ludger Biedebaum. If you see how he's been riding Miller over the last 12 to 18 months, it feels like there is still so much success inside the ring for Ludger Biedebaum to achieve. So I think we might still be seeing him for quite some time. Now that essentially shows a real good look at how the championship battle stands. Stockholm Hearts under pressure after their eight penalties in round one. Berlin Eagles double clear. They will come out as the third last team today. Stockholm really, really early in the round. So it is all for Berlin to go on and win. But what about the battle for third and fourth place? Because we thought that the Shanghai Swans were comfortable, but it certainly does not look that way. As we look back on some of the contenders that are knocking on the door, Madrid in motion who are in pole position and will be the final team to come out the gate today. One of the many double clears, the five double clears, in fact, from round one. Michael van der Fluten, Eduardo Alvarez Aznar, both jumping clear and the fastest of the times, in fact, almost five seconds faster than the Paris Panthers. Harry Smolders and Gregory Watley jumping for Paris Panthers in round one. There has been a rider change. And as we would have expected, Ben Mayer and Feltic HB will be competing in today's second round. Let's not forget that Ben Mayer will be looking for a really solid round to keep in mind the LGCT Grand Prix later on tonight, where he is looking as the front man to win the LGCT overall title. So a big day for Ben Mayer, Paris Panthers and Feltic HB. For the Shanghai Swans, it looked to be a bit of a wobbly start. Christian Alman with a four Thanks to a fence down by Solid Gold, very unlikely. Max Kuna then following up with a clear on Electric Blue P. Martin Fuchs comes in for the team today as they then see Max Kuna take a rest. But what about Falcons Vart United, your 2021 champions, not starting superbly well with Marcus Eining and Priam du Rosé. A fault there, taking him to four penalties. He has made a horse change. He brings in Stargold for round two. Andrei Tima, the European champion on Chakaria, will once again jump in round two as he did in round one. So a look 
at the teams that are trying to keep the pressure on. Madrid in motion, Paris Panthers, and of course, Falcons Vart United. This is how it stands at the end of Global Champions League Round 1. Those five double clears, most importantly, many would say, including that of the Berlin Eagles. A good four for New York Empire and for the Cannes Stars, and Miami Celtics, in fact, looking very good for their four as well. But all those fours have done now is create a bigger gap between the Berlin Eagles and the Stockholm Hearts, who are now down, way, way down in the second half of the table. The more teams that wedge themselves in between them, the bigger the advantage for the Berlin Eagles. Shanghai Swans looking to hold on to fourth place. And then we see Stockholm Hearts powered by H&M, 14th position. They will be third to come out the gate today. So here is the question. If things end the way they end today, here is a virtual table to show you how it will finish. Berlin Eagles, powered by Fundis Sport, will be your Global Champions League winners for 2022. Stockholm Hearts will drop to second. Prague Lions remain in third. And the Shanghai Swans, ever, ever so likely, will just hold on to their fourth place finish. So it is going to be incredibly tight for the Shanghai Swans, who, if you recall, we had previously spoken about as championship contenders after signing Malon Zanotelli as the, one of their pre-season transfers. Now, all of a sudden, they are holding on, gripping to fourth place as tightly as they can. Are they going to be able to hold on to it? That is the big question. Frederick de Bakker, once again, standing by for us in Riyadh. Frederick, we had put the Shanghai Swans down as possible championship contenders when they signed Malon Zalatelli. How now are they gripping for dear life onto fourth place based on what we've seen? Is there a possibility that Madrid in motion or anybody else can sneak in? There is. There were a whole group of um, top four contenders before we had round one. After round one, we've already lost a few, like London Knights, maybe even Valka Swart United. But the uh, Shanghai Swans also had that very uncharacteristic rail of solid gold set, putting them on four. And the team that has been super consistent and has scored six podium finishes this season, Madrid in motion, the team that sits in eighth going into Riyadh, now just needs two points more to sneak in. If they would get level on points, Shanghai Swans and Madrid in motion, Madrid in motion would go into the top four and into the semi-finals at the GC playoffs in Prague. But for that, A, Madrid in motion needs to win and Shanghai Swans need to drop two more places. That is to 11th. However, if Madrid in motion would not win and make it second place at best, then Shanghai Swans need to finish last. And that, with the result, for example, of Istanbul Sultals, seems very, very unrealistic. So Madrid in motion needs to win. Shanghai Swans need to lose two more places. But of course, if you're a Shanghai Swan fan, it, it is actually, it's, it's going to be close, but it is realistic that they're going to hang on to it. It's going to be tight. It's going to be close. It's just two points, but it is realistic. All right, but Frederick, before we ask you about the course and what stands out, we caught up with Eduardo Alvarez Azna about round one and whether or not Madrid Emotion can indeed squeeze into the top four. It's still possible. It's not easy, but uh, it's in our hands uh, to do a good result and then wait uh, what the others do and uh, see if we can climb uh, those uh, two spots that we need. For the moment, uh, the pressure uh, is there, but uh, we we don't feel it still when the classes has started and then uh, we are last team to go today uh, we know all the other results so th then maybe the last 15-20 uh, minutes you start getting a little bit more more nervous but uh, nervous in a good way that uh, you want to do uh, as, as better as you can so I think those nerves uh, in some somehow they are good. Nerves are always a good thing when it comes to professional sports, and I have no doubt that Madrid Emotion, of course, Michael van der and Eduardo Alvarez Azna will deal with those nerves superbly well. As Frederick pointed out, there is a possibility, but the favour still lies firmly in the hands of the Shanghai Swans for that top four place. Frederick, in round one, you told us about a particular turn that stood out, and I wonder what in GCL round two today stands out for you. Finale. Uliano Vizzani, last day of the GCL. What stands out in this ring? I'm not going to answer that. I'm going to try to get an answer elsewhere. I hope that she is available. Two sweets. Marlin, you have a minute for me. Or... Ooh, 
okay, I respect it, I respect it, it's okay. No, no. Um, <laughs> so you have to do it with me, Mark. And what stands out? Um, a few choices out of the double combination, very long five or very long six to uh, the upright, very tall upright as well. Plank coming out of the triple combination catches my eye. What Marley Bayard Jonsson is walking right now with Hendrik van Ekman to that last fence. That's what so many are talking about. Some say very confidently it is a standard five. Marley Bayard Jonsson is thinking, is there also a six more controlled if I have to get the double clear on the board? That's what she's discussing right now with Hendrik van Ekman. So a few options, a few decisions to be made, a few inside turns as well, should it come down to uh, combined time. Let's not forget that we've got a whole group of teams just within one rail of the lead, so just for the stage, and with those inside turns that could decide over the stage win, over final positions on the championship, and you never know if those inside turns would decide on the win in the league as well. But especially that plank out of the triple, plank at the final fence on a deciding distance, is the five that long or is there room for six? Those are a few of the questions, Mark. And um, if we just turn, if we just turn this way, here I come into the triple combination. And only if, if the camera can get this really in perspective, triple combination is, is wide going in, but it's not overly tall. But you can really see if you get level with the front bar, the back bar is square. But look at how tall the center vertical and the plank behind it stand out. So you come in with quite a bit of pace, then there's two strides and horses might get a little bit fast, and then there is a plank to jump out of this combination. It is much taller. But it's not grueling. From what I see, it's not grueling. And you have to, you have to keep in mind that Fezzani also has to test the horses in the Launching Global Champions Tour Grand Prix, of course, where he has to test those three champions, Alman, De Vos and Meer. And that is also a part of this story. These riders are not really uh, fighting for championship positions anymore. But a fault could also send them out of the Grand Prix, ruin their championship chances. So all of a sudden, here in Riyadh, at the 15th stage of the season, LGCT and GCL get interwoven and everything comes together right here and right now. Oh, it is going to be the best Super Saturday we could possibly have asked for at the end of the season. Frederick de Bakker, thank you very much. We'll let you get back into your commentary seat, getting ready for Global Champions League Round 2. And as he mentions, of course, we'll put the spotlight on the Longines Global Champions Tour later on today with the likes of Peter DeVos, the likes of Ben Mayer, Christian Alman. They are all looking to perform today to make sure that they get into the Grand Prix and go on and chase down yet another title by the end of the night. It is going to be the Super Saturday of all Super Saturdays to round out the weekend. So stay with us here on GCTV as we wrap up the 2022 season here for you. GCL Round 2 is next.